Boobri, an overview. The Boobri is a mythological shape pair shifting entity inhabiting the locks of the west coast of Scotland. It commonly adopts the appearance of a gigantic water bird resembling a cormorant or great northern diver, but it can also materialist in the form of various other mythological creatures such as a water bull. A generally malevolent entity, the Boobri typically preys on livestock being transported on ships, but it is also fond of otters, of which it consumes a considerable number. In its manifestation as a water horse, the creature is able to gallop across the top of locks as if on solid ground. During the summer months, it is seen infrequently as a large insect, sucking the blood of horses. Fulvorus Campbell of Islay speculated that descriptions of the boobri may be based on sightings of the great oak. The bellowing sound made by the boobri, more like a bull than a bird, may have its origin in the strange call of the common bittern, which was a rare visitor to Scotland. Etymology Boobri may derive from Borber, meaning cow giver or cow bestowing. Edward Dwelly, a Scottish lexicographer, lists tar boudry as monster, demon and god capable of changing himself into many forms, Tarb Edry is given as a northern county's variation. The simpler component of Tarb as a single word is defined by Dwelly as bull. Transcribers of the tale have used several differing spellings of the second component, some even adopting inconsistent variations throughout their own renditions. George Henderson, for instance, a folklorist and Celtic scholar, used five alternatives, Poesether, Baudry, Boalber, Ither, and Thayer. Spelling variations employed by other writers include Idri, Bawar, Baudry, Baudry, Ayer, and Oyer. Folk Beliefs Description and common attributes. Investigation into folklore, especially Celtic oral traditions, began in the 19th century, and several bizarre and less familiar beasts were identified, including the boobri. It is a generally malevolent entity, with the ability to materialist in the form of various mythical creatures. It commonly preys on animals being transported on ships, preferably calves but will also happily eat lambs and sheep, carrying its prey away to the deepest water before consuming it. It is also extremely fond of otters, which it consumes in large quantities in its favourite bird manifestation the boobri resembles a gigantic great northern diver or cormorant, but with white markings. According to Folklorist Campbell of Islay, a detailed account of its dimensions provided by an authoritative source claims that it is larger than 17 of the biggest eagles put together. It has a strong black beak about 11 inches 218 wide and 17 inches 413 in length, the final 5 inches 113 of which taper like that of an eagle. The creature's neck is almost 3 feet 0.91 m long with a girth of a little under 2 feet 0.61 m. Short black powerful legs lead to webbed feet with gigantic claws. An imprint of a boobrie's foot left in some lakeside mud called the span of a large wide spreading pair of red deer's horns. It bellows noisily with displeasure, sounding more like a bull than a bird. The design of its wings is more conducive to swimming rather than for flight. Its evil powers when in the form of a bird were said by Campbell this late have terrified a minister out of his propriety. The boobrie's insatiable appetite for livestock posed a threat to local farmers as they relied on their animals as a means of providing income and for Dalthor sea locks at the boobrie's natural home they will shelter on land in overgrown heather. Accounts are inconsistent as to the extent of the boobri's habitat. Campbell of Islay claims that it is specific to the locks of Argyllshire, as does Emeritus Professor of English James Mackillop. 
The writers Catherine Briggs and Patricia Monaghan, on the other hand, consider the creature's range to be the broader Scottish Highlands, although Briggs does sometimes specify Argyllshire. Campbell of Islay's undated manuscript notes that Bubri had not been seen for several years, probably due to the widespread burning of heather in the area of its habitat. Alternative Manifestations When manifested as a water horse, the creature is able to gallop across the surface of locks. The beating noise of the creature's hooves on the water is the same as if it were galloping on solid ground. Henderson reproduced parts of Campbell of Islay's manuscripts when writing Servovals in Belief among the Celts 1911. Among them is a story listed as Bubrius Tarbust. The tale starts by detailing how a man named Yi Chan fed a colossal black bull when he discovered it writhing in pain and possibly close to death at the side of Loch Nandolbren on the west coast of Argyle. Some months later, Femi, Yi Chan's girlfriend, is occasionally disturbed by elusive shadows she senses on the loch, which make her think of Murdoch, her former paramour. While she sat dreaming of each hand one evening when staying at a shiling near the lock, she sensed the flicker of a shadow behind her, except this time it was Murdoch. He promptly overpowered her by enveloping her in a blanket and tying her hands. At that point, a water bull came to Femi's rescue by knocking Murdoch to the ground. The bull then knelt down allowing Femi to get on its back, before transporting her at the speed of light back to the home of her mother. The bull disappeared, never to be seen again, but a voice was heard in there calling out loudly. The verse heard was in Gaelic, and translates as. It is then asserted that the tale reveals the persistence in folk belief of the idea of transformation, the bubri being the abode of a spirit bubri can also manifest itself in the form of a large insect that sucks the blood of horses. Henderson refers to it as a big striped brown goblet in or earwig with lots of tentacles or feelers. It was infrequently seen in this form, usually only at the height of the summer, during August and September. Capture and Hunting a farmer and his son were ploughing a field on the Isle of Mole using a team of four horses beside Loch Frieza, but work stalled after one of the horses lost a shoe and was unable to continue. Noticing a horse grazing nearby, they decided to try using it as a replacement. Once harnessed to the wooden plough, the horse appeared to be familiar with the task and initially worked steadily. As it began to work towards an area closest to the loch, it became restless and the farmer gently used a whip to encourage the animal to continue. It reacted by immediately transforming into a gigantic boobry, giving out a loud bellow and diving into the lock, pulling the plough and the other three horses with it. The frightened farmer and his son watched as the creature swam to the centre of the lock then dived underwater, taking the other horses and plough with it. Seven hours later, there was still no sign of the three-hole session, a story transcribed by John Campbell of Kilbury. A hunter attempted to shoot a boobry after he spotted it in its bird-like manifestation on a sea lock one chilly February day. The man paddled into the lock until the water was up to his shoulders, but when he was about 85 yards 70 m from the creature, it dived under the water. The hunter maintained his position for 45 minutes before returning to the shore where he remained for a further six hours waiting unsuccessfully for the boobry to resurface. No clear indication is given of the loch's whereabouts. Origins Campbell of Islay speculates that the boobry may have originated from sightings of the Great Hawk. He noted he had been told stories of the creature by various people, and regarded it as having a real existence in the popular mind. He considered the tale of the boobry and its water horse manifestation resembled the Norse myth of the plowing of the Ossa. Referring to Forbes' 1905 Dictionary of Gaelic Names of Beasts in which boobair is defined as a common bittern, 
and a detailed description given by scholar James Logie Robertson of the Bull of the Balkan alternative name for bittern in the Scotsman in 1908, Henderson hypothesis that the boobry may stem from the bittern. Referring to the bittern's strangely weird sound and highlighting its weird hollow cry during the night and throughout the evening, he describes it as resembling quietly bellowing cattle, particularly during the bird's breeding season. Records indicate that the bird was rare in Scotland but had been sighted in the first decade of the 20th century, although catching sight of a bittern was believed to be a harbinger of death or disaster. Thank you for watching our video on Boobry, brought to you by Decurific. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.